Canadian Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. CDB concerned about the state of regional travel. That's our top story in Caribbean Newsline for Wednesday, May 30th. From the CMC News Center in Bridgetown, I'm Nicole Best. Good evening. The Board of Governors of the Caribbean Development Bank, the CDB, began its 48th annual meeting in Grenada on Wednesday with President Dr. Warren Smith and host Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell expressing concern about the state of regional travel. Dr. Smith told the gathering the CDB believes finding a way to reduce taxes on airline tickets without incurring losses to governments is crucial to solving the region's travel woes. At CDB, we are satisfied that resolution of the issue of high and regressive taxation on air travel within CARICOM without the loss of revenue to regional governments is a vital part of the resolution of the regional aviation crisis in the Eastern Caribbean. The CDB study confirms that air travel within the Eastern Caribbean is price elastic. I don't think you needed a PhD in economics to figure that one out. But it's always good to get the empirical confirmation. That study also concludes that reductions in both taxes and airport charges would lead to sizable growth in arrivals in virtually all countries. In his presentation, Prime Minister Mitchell echoed the CDB president's sentiments, adding that a decision to reduce ticket taxes should be a collective one. I have long advocated that we urgently need to reduce the cost of intra-regional air travel. I echo my call made at various heads of government conferences that heads should collectively agree to reduce airline ticket taxes and some of the fees which are attached to intra-regional air travel. I continue to believe that all that will represent, this will represent a significant installment on the regional integration account. While facilitating enhanced freedom of movement of goods and services and people. The focus of the two-day meeting is climate resilience and participants will examine regional success stories, lessons learned, and opportunities for the Caribbean to triumph over recent setbacks, including the impacts of last year's Atlantic hurricane season. The thrust is for regional leaders to climate-proof their countries' energy systems and invest in renewable energy and energy efficiency to build economic resilience. A new study by the Inter-American Development Bank, the IDB, says Latin America and the Caribbean could add an additional 11 billion U.S. dollars in annual trade by blending their existing 33 separate agreements into a single regional free trade block. The Washington-based institution said that while preferential trade agreements have increased intra-regional trade by 64% on average, those gains fall well short of what a $5 trillion U.S. dollar market could offer. And it said the agreements have also proven inadequate to make the region more competitive internationally. The IDB study therefore offers a roadmap toward maximizing these gains by promoting a path of convergence among the existing agreements which would eventually lead to a Latin American and Caribbean free trade agreement. And the bank says Argentina, Mexico and Brazil would be the key players in any meaningful integration effort. 
Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley is advocating dialogue as a means of addressing the challenges facing Venezuela. He took that position as he responded to a question from journalists on the negative responses from countries like the United States and Canada to recent re-election of Nicolas Maduro as president of the South American country. If I am to speak for the tenor around the table, is that there needs to be some significant dialogue to respond to the developments that are taking place around us. Trinidad and Tobago stands by its position of non-intervention and non-interference. But having said that, we are acknowledging that there are difficulties in Venezuela, but there are a variety of recommendations coming from many different quarters, and it is for us to find some common ground somewhere along the way. Dr. Rowley's comments came less than 24 hours after the Organization of American States released a report on crimes against humanity that have been committed by Maduro's administration. The hemispheric body says the report will be sent to the Prosecutor General of the International Crimes Court to initiate criminal proceedings against the Venezuelan government. Popular Transportation APP Uber has put the brakes on its operations in Trinidad and Tobago, even as the government said it had been operating illegally in the first place. The California-based company said operations paused Friday, 11 days after an Uber driver was murdered in the Twin Island Republic. Peter Christopher of C News reports. Driver Christopher Mohammed was found dead in St. James and his car was reportedly stolen. Mohammed's death had come after several reports of Uber drivers being robbed had been made to police. The company said after operating for more than a year in Trinidad and Tobago and having made multiple efforts to create a significant change in the country in regards to mobility and opportunities for entrepreneurship, Uber has unfortunately decided to pause its operation in the country. This decision was not made lightly, but at this time we believe that there is a lack of a proper environment for innovation and technology that thrive in Trinidad and Tobago. Uber had faced its troubles since coming into Trinidad and Tobago last year. The legality of the service became a parliamentary debate after taxi drivers challenged the app's operation in this country. The company was also forced to move away from its international practice of no cash, as the local market did not support credit cards as widely as foreign countries. The company also had a third time during the carnival season, with several FETCOs displeased with the lack of service during the season. Uber would later apologize via email to their app users. Meanwhile, the Trinidad and Tobago government says that although Uber ins insisted it was a technology company providing software and not a taxi service, it was operating illegally. In a statement, the Ministry of Works and Transportation said it met with company officials on several occasions with the intention of ensuring Uber was compliant with the country's laws. And it said although the company was required to comply with two essential immovable requirements relating to the local and formal transportation industry, it never responded to requests for information. Over in St. Kitts and Nevis, a High Court judge on Wednesday adjourned to June 15th the case in which the government is seeking to have opposition leader Dr. Denzel Douglas removed from Parliament because he has a diplomatic passport from Dominica. Attorney General Vincent Byron told reporters that Justice Trevor Ward heard an application by Douglas to allow expert evidence to be used in relation to Dominica law. He said the government has asked the court to determine whether Douglas is in violation of the Constitution by virtue of the fact that he has shown allegiance or is under allegiance or obedience to a foreign state. The Dr. Timothy Harris administration believes the opposition leader is and he should vacate his seat in Parliament. Still to come in Caribbean Newsline, heavy rains cause death, widespread flooding and infrastructural damage in Cuba. The details after the break. The Career Development Institute's Caribbean Rising Stars in Beauty competition determines the best and most talented in hair, makeup, nails or barbering. Win a scholarship and prizes worth more than $5,000. Build your clientele and expand your business. Upload four photographs of your best work to our email address. Watch the public vote on our Facebook page. Join the winners at the prestigious Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Center for a live finals competition. Email careerdevelopment.institute at yahoo.com. The Career Development Institute, bringing the best in regional beauty together.
It starts from sunrise, a city filled with an island vibe. Music, people, color, friendship, culture, and the warmest of smiles. Come enjoy the unique costumes, pulsating steel pans, exotic culture, exciting fets, and unforgettable people. Discover Antigua's Carnival, the Caribbean's greatest summer festival, July 27th to August 8th, because the beach really is just the beginning. Days before the official start of the 2018 Atlantic hurricane season, parts of Cuba have been hit by heavy rains that have claimed the lives of four people and caused widespread flooding and infrastructural damage. Tens of thousands of people were evacuated. Many communities have been cut off and nearly 60,000 people are without electricity. We get more in this report from Richards Richards of Canal Caribe in Cuba. Heavy rains has caused major damages in the central and western regions of Cuba due to floods and torrential rains associated with Alberto subtropical storm. About 15,000 residents of the province of Santo Espiritus have been moved to evacuation centers. Damages are also reported in more than 120 homes. A mobile phone near a bridge in Sasa del Medio locality in the province of Santo Espiritus made me to remember a song. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down. Tra -la 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 -la. National transportation services, train, bus, airplanes and others have been postponed according to the situation in different parts of the island. Cienfuegos and Villa Clara are also two of the central provinces of Cuba that have suffered the heavy rains, which in the last 24 hours has poured down some 400 millimeters of rainfall in those parts of the country. In Villa Clara, 16,000 inhabitants have been evacuated in 12 municipalities, whereas 64 houses have collapsed and 128 others are importantly damaged. Tree landscapes are also reported. Dams are at an average of 124% of their capacity. That is why all of them are easing their waters now. Since late April, rain has been falling throughout all Cuba, but from the 22nd of May, due to the formation and development of subtropical storm Alberto, the rains have been more intense and severe from Pinar del Rio, the westernmost province until Holguín on the east. This month of May has been the rainiest of all in the last 60 years in Cuba. At the moment of writing this report, the weather forecast for the falling hours was strong and heavy rains for the central and western part of the island. Meanwhile, the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, SUDEMA, has officially launched a project to strengthen the resilience of schools and, by extension, the education sector in the Caribbean ahead of the June 1st start of the hurricane season. It's the Model Safe Schools program. The education sector has experienced significant damage due to the impact of natural hazards. And in an effort to address that vulnerability, SEDEMA has developed a Model Safe Schools toolkit. It was piloted in four schools in Anguilla, Barbados, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines in 2014 and 2015. We get more in this ABS News report. The Caribbean Development Bank has now begun disbursement of grant funding of 746,000 euros to the SEDEMA Coordinating Unit.
to further implement the toolkit in six countries, including Antigua and Barbuda. Minister of Education, the Honorable Michael Brown, gave brief history behind the program. A year ago, on uh, April 17, 2017 to be exact, Antigua and Barbuda took on the initiative of hosting and champion, championing the first ever um, Safe Schools Ministerial Meeting right here in Antigua and Barbuda. At the same time, Antigua and Barbuda assumed the chairmanship of the Safe Schools Initiative. And it came from a background whereby stakeholders across the Caribbean had come to the realization that for many, many years, our schools have been the focal point of community development, of community safe harbor, of community initiative. Our schools not only educate persons, but in times of natural disasters, whether they were designed for that purpose or not, it is often the place where the community looks to if their own place of abode was destroyed. Minister of Works, the Honorable Lennox Weston, listed some of the benefits that will be derived from this initiative. The most important and precious asset we have are our people. And our future depends not only on ourselves now, but the future quality of students we produce in our school systems. And Dominica presented, and well, Barbuda presented the most recent example that as part of the whole human dislocation, the most challenging is when the children can't go to school. Because children can't go to school, parents can't go to work. Children can't be educated, children will be behind. Minister Weston noted that having uneducated children mean there will be an untrained society, so schools must be built to be resilient and sustainable. Deputy Director of the National Office of Disaster Services, Sherrod James, gave an overview of the program. Um, the goal of this initiative is not just to prepare facilities and persons for a hurricane season. It is ingrained in the whole initiative of our comprehensive disaster management thrust. As we know, comprehensive disaster management is the Caribbean brand of the International Disaster Risk Management Initiative. Um, as being such, it looks at management of all hazards in all phases by all of the stakeholders involved. And it involves us basically looking at how we live. The project will benefit the education sectors of six Sedema participating states vulnerable to climate change and disasters. The CDM strategy 2014 to 2024, coordinated by Sedema, provides the regional framework for building a safer, more resilient Caribbean through strengthening institutional arrangements. Britain's Home Office has revealed it has only managed to contact three of about 60 people who may have been wrongfully deported as part of the Windrush scandal. This is despite an intense search which started weeks ago. Home Office officials have searched through more than 8,000 records dating back to 2002 to find cases of Commonwealth citizens who may have been forced to leave for failing to provide the right documentation despite living legally in the UK for decades. The British government has come under intense criticism over the treatment of the so-called Windrush generation of Caribbean immigrants who moved to the UK between the 1940s and the 1970s but were fully but were never fully naturalized. More than 5,000 people have been identified as potential Windrush cases. And earlier this month, it was revealed 63 cases had been earmarked for detailed investigation. Home Secretary Sajid Javid said the wrongly deported were being proactively contacted through a specialist Windrush task force. And ahead in Newsline Sports, Sri Lanka not taking West Indies lightly as their tour of the region begins. Stay with us. Sport is next. Follow your part to the 22nd annual St. Kitts Music Festival from June 27 to July 1st, 2018. Featuring Kesty Band, Single Melody, Small X Band, Nyla Blackman, and Betty Wax. Also, Patty LaBelle, Dijon, New Vibes International, Rhythm of the Beat, and Wayne Wonder. Shaka Dimas and Myers and Miss Lauren Hill. Save the date and book now for the 22nd annual St. Kitts Music Festival.
an experience like no other. It starts from sunrise, a city filled with an island vibe, music, people, color, friendship, culture, and the warmest of smiles. Come enjoy the unique costumes, pulsating steel pans, exotic culture, exciting fets, and unforgettable people. Discover Antigua's Carnival, the Caribbean's greatest summer festival, July 27th to August 8th, because the beach really is just the beginning. to combine a vacation with your laughter? Then St. Martin is the place to be on June 22nd and 23rd for the 14th annual edition of its comedy festival, Laugh Till Belly Burst, with comedians from all over the world. Book hotel and show tickets until June 20th now at www.ltbbsxm.com. As Sri Lanka began their test tour in the West Indies, Captain Dennis Shandimal says his team won't be taking the Caribbean side for granted. He was speaking to TV6's Vinod Nawani ahead of Wednesday's match against the President's Eleven at the Brian Lara Cricket Academy in Taruba. Visitors are in the West Indies for a three-match test series against the Caribbean side. According to Captain Dinesh Chandimal, the team has done its homework and it's now all about executing those plans. We had, we had a really good preparation in Sri Lanka and uh, we did a camp in Kandy. So one, it was a one-week camp and uh, everyone in a good shape and uh, looking forward to the series. A big blow that Dhananjay De Silva is not here because his father was killed a uh, tragedy. Uh, how does that affect the team? Yeah, it was a really uh, a hard situation for him and the team. Yeah, it's a, uh, uh, it's a really shocking moment to everyone and uh, so uh, our prayers and thoughts with uh, Dananja always. Uh, so it will be, uh, uh, I mean, really challenging, especially for Dananja and uh, I'm sure he will be okay, uh, okay in future. Even though the Windies have been struggling in all formats at international level, Chandimal is not taking the hosts for granted. After all, the Sri Lankans have also had their ups and downs. Yeah, we all know they are a really good side in the world and uh, especially they are play if they are playing in West Indies, they are really good. So uh, we never underestimate West Indies, So, but uh, as a team we have something in up our flu and if we can execute that, so we can uh, give them a really good uh, challenge in this series. Chandimal averages 43.75 with a bat from 46 test matches. When asked about his personal goals against the Windies, he preferred to focus on the main objective. Now, after 10 years, this uh, uh, second time tour to uh, West Indies, especially for the Test Series. And uh, so we never win a Test Series here. So if we can do that, so it will be a really good memory for me and the team. The Sri Lankans play a three-day tour match starting Wednesday in Taruba before the first Test starts on June 6th at the Queen's Park Oval. Staying in cricket, Caribbean hotel chain Sandals Resorts will sponsor West Indies for Thursday's Hurricane Relief T20 International against the ICC World Eleven at Lords. The development comes on the heels of Tuesday's announcement that the sponsorship between uh, telecommunications giant Digicel and Cricket West Indies had ended with a year still left to run on the contract. Sandals Managing Director for the United Kingdom and Europe, Carl Thompson, said the company's deep involvement in the region meant the charity match was the ideal opportunity 
opportunity to be involved in a worthy cause. Thursday's fixture, which will see several high-profile West Indies players pitted against an array of global stars, will raise funds for five stadia in the Caribbean that were damaged by Hurricanes Irma and Maria last September. Windsor Park in Dominica and the Vivian Richards Cricket Stadium in Antigua are among those set to benefit. And the match bowls off at 6 p.m. and that would be 1 p.m. Eastern Caribbean time. Switching sport now, world governing body FIFA that's the football body FIFA, opened its regional office in Barbados on Tuesday. The new office will seek to lend support to football development across the region. CBC's uh, TV8's Kamal Haynes has the details. Blue and white structure marks part of FIFA's commitment to drive global football development and further strengthen and enhance ties with confederations and member associations. Present at the opening was CONCACAF's president, Victor Montagliani, along with FIFA's secretary general, Fatma Sumora, FIFA's regional office manager Marlon Glean, the Caribbean Football Union and Barbados Football Association's president Randy Harris, and FIFA director of member associations Veron Musenga Umba. Samora so touched on some of the major responsibilities of the office. It I also have a responsibility to, uh, let's say, uh, uh, oversee the uh, development program across across the region. This office also will help deepen uh, the relationship and make FIFA much closer to its member, member association. And finally, uh, through this uh, regional office, uh, we are also uh, expecting to be able to design a tailor-made uh, response to the development needs when it comes to football. BFA President Harris sees the move by FIFA as the birth of higher standards in the region. I believe that if we operate as a united front, we will get more done because we will make things easier for each other. Take for instance, we have the facility at Will Leeds just completed with the forward program for FIFA. We can sell it and share it with all of our brothers in, Carib in the Caribbean so that they can, it will make their projects um, be, being constructed a little bit easier because we went through it already. We can take them through it, right? So. Um, this office is, I believe, the beginning of the region going to another standard when it comes to the game. And that's the sport. Stay with us. We'll be right back. From sunrise, a city filled with an island vibe, music, people, color, friendship, culture, and the warmest of smiles. Come enjoy the unique costumes, pulsating steel pans, exotic culture, exciting fets, and unforgettable people. Discover Antigua's Carnival, the Caribbean's greatest summer festival, July 27th to August 8th, because the beach really is is just the beginning. Again, the major developments of this day, Caribbean Development Bank President Dr. Warren Smith and Grenada's Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell concerned about the state of regional air travel. And in sport, Sri Lanka not taking West Indies for granted as they tour the region. And that begins, that began on Wednesday. Well, that's Caribbean Newsline. For news and sport around the clock, log on to kandanews.com. We'll be back here again tomorrow. But from all of us at CMC News, thank you for watching and do have yourselves a good night.